Hi, everyone. You're all very welcome to another trader interview here with the Alpha Capital Group. So here we have Andreas, one of our funded uh, traders from Costa Rica, um, dialing in very, very early morning over there. But of course, dialing in for another uh, conversation about obviously himself as a trader, how he's got into the markets, obviously what he's utilizing in terms of his trading plan, and obviously getting to know more about Andreas and his obviously style of trading. So Andreas, very welcome, of course. Um, good to obviously have you on board. Um, I know Alex has been talking about your trading recently quite a lot, uh, and it's obviously good to it's good to be able to speak with you today and obviously have a a proper chat about your trading. So I suppose Andreas, would you like to maybe introduce us uh, to the public and obviously uh, maybe talk to us a bit about how you got into trading? Uh, sure. <laughs> well, thanks, Paul. Uh, thank you guys for having me here and. Um... So grateful that you gave me the opportunity to like chat with you guys because it's always been like that. It's like family me you know, since the very beginning. Alex has always been there, and he talks to you like uh, he knows you from his entire life. So yeah, it's, it's really yeah. cool. And my history, well, uh, you said it. My name is Andres. I live in Costa Rica, and I got into trading like uh, in the pandemics, uh, just like six months before that. I got interested into trading and I started looking at courses like uh, like free courses that you see on the internet and then like YouTube and stuff. And then I started looking a little bit further and got into an academy that offered like network marketing, but also a really good, uh, really good uh, trading school or well, academy. And I got my basics there. And then I started looking more and more and more. And that was about like two and a half years ago, something like that. And... So yeah, uh, that's how long I've been trading for, and and I really like trading. Lovely, <laughs> it really changed my mind. Brilliant, brilliant. And why did you just, what? Well, like what? What allowed you to pursue the career in trading? Have you worked in finance beforehand, or was it just something different that you were maybe interested <laughs> in before, or, or or kind of what was the reasoning why you why you got into trading? Um, not not really like banking before, just like contact centers for a couple of banks, but uh, nothing really important or based like related to trading and what got me into trading was the idea and the fact that it could change uh i mean how i make money doing the smart money instead of working eight to five uh, for the same amount of money i can get in like single trade in a matter of day so yeah. it's basically i mean it's not about money but money is what will like, allow you to do some things for you for your family and to get you places so it's really about that flexibility lifestyle really yeah. as well isn't it yeah big thing brilliant brilliant um so you've obviously learned um obviously in the last kind of couple of years ago since the onset of the pandemic um and you, you've obviously gone through kind of the courses etc so when you're trading now what is the strategy that you're you're utilizing are you kind of shorter term scalping are you day trading are you swing trading what, what what's the kind of strategy that you're utilizing at the moment when you're trading uh, it's mostly day trading, also like uh, anywhere between day and scalping. So it depends on depends on the set. Um, I'm not like based on fundamentals that much. I know they're there and I try to avoid them as much as possible. But if I see one and see that it might help my setup, then I will go ahead and put a trade on it. Maybe it's not as as heavy as the regulars because I know they might there might be some slippage or something like that. Of course. Yeah. So, but it's mostly like day trading or scalping, yeah. Okay, brilliant. And what asset classes are you trading off of at the moment? Uh, with Alpha, the most of my trades have been on gold and your AUD. Oh, so okay. those are the one that but I was just looking at the journal and everything. And for this account, is it's just those two pairs that I've been trading with. Okay, so you're you're kind of focusing primarily on a set set of assets rather than trying to look at it at a cross market perspective. Um, so that's that's quite interesting. So you're mentioning there you're you're focusing on the technical side or the, or the price action side over the fundamentals. So is that just simple trend? Is is a price action? Is there any other indicators like RSI or MACD, or are you just a, a trader who would focus primarily more on the price action rather than the use of indicators? um don't really use indicators that much i just look at the price action and then follow the price the order flows and everything okay. uh, since the beginning i like trading uh not like the basic support and resistance i mean those are really good if you know how to use them and continue a lot on a one hour or four hour time frame mm -hmm. 
um, but I like the five, 15 minute time frame so I can get, I mean, shorter stop loss. And uh, I don't really use indicators. What I use is to just follow the price and follow the ranges and everything. Looking at the liquidity. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Um, so you've obviously been trading two and a half years. So I presume you would have done quite a significant bit of back testing before you went down the funding route to make sure that the strategy that you're using, the process you're following gives you kind of moderate degrees of success. I presume that's the case for yourself, Andreas, is it? Um, actually, back testing has always been like a, a difficult step to me. <laughs> okay. Because it, it always been really hard for me to, to like, uh, sit on the graphics and look at something that already happened. Yeah. So it it, it feels like I'm like I'm cheating myself because I'm picking a scenario that will okay. fulfill my strategy or what I want to see. See, so, so you're so, forward testing, not back testing. He, sometimes I do like live testing, uh, life testing. I mean, I don't yeah. like place the trade, but I just mark everything and put everything there Brilliant. and see okay. where it goes. See where uh, it goes. Cool. But yeah, back cool. testing has always been has always yeah. been really hard for me. I, I, I even think... though I have like two and a half years in trading, mm -hmm. um, it's not like I've been active all these two and a half years. I mean, I've been learning, but uh, it's always been this psychology step to like go ahead and trust yourself and apply everything on the market. Yeah, you so, have. Yeah, I suppose you have to be able to back yourself really, because that's only only whether you know whether you have the metal, not so much confidence, or I suppose you could call it confidence, <laughs> discipline that you have the approach nailed down. And I suppose that's the only way you can kind of tell. I, I know a lot of guys would would not back test in demos. They just prefer to get stuck into it because the mindset of trading in a demo and trading in a live environment are two very very different things from a psychology perspective. Um, which which is quite interesting. So that kind of brings us then to emotions. So given that yeah. you're kind of looking at things in a live environment and obviously as a live funded trader, how do you go about handling you, do your emotions? Because obviously emotions, mindset, that's a hugely important thing in, in the world of trading. Yeah, well, one thing that you mentioned, I've always seen my demo account and real account. Uh, I've always think like you should treat real account as your demo and your demo as your real because in the demo account you will trade like no matter what and you don't care if you lose or if you do the profits or anything so you should treat that as your real account and the real account uh, you should treat it as your demo because on the real account you should take care of your balance and everything and make sure you don't blow it on the first day and as far as my psychology being a funded trader um uh, first time i got funded was december last year Mm -hmm. It's actually the same scenario because I got my live account for uh, of uh, December or January this year, like the, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I started January last year uh, being a funded trader and I blow that account <laughs> because of my psychology. So this year it was the same scenario. So I was telling myself like, do not repeat that. Uh, don't do it. Yeah. And at the beginning, if you take a look at my journal, uh, because of me thinking of it, uh, I was doing exactly the same thing. I mean, I was down like... Uh, I would think it was it was about like six percent something like that. Okay. On this account, and then I was able to bring it bring it back in and allow me to do a withdraw and everything. So I'm, I'm basically just getting the hands of it and okay. just doing like small withdrawals. And the, the advantage is that in Costa Rica, I mean, with one or two percent of that account, you can just live comfortably. So yeah, yeah. I'm not really looking into getting like eight percent, ten percent, something like that, because. Yeah. That would just affect my confidence or my mentality. Yeah, and, yeah. and often as well, the, the bigger the position size and the more money you try to make, the more money potentially lo losing as well. And that obviously, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a spiral on the mindset, spiral on the psychology, and also potentially involves people potentially failing um, live funded environments and then obviously having to start the whole process again, which is obviously not something you want. So I suppose there you talked about your journaling. Um, and me personally, I think journaling is important. Well, obviously just the style that I trade off of. Um, but would you be the type of individual that would review your journal, journal trades, review your performance, review your data and metrics? Uh, I do take a look at my dashboard. Uh, I mean, your dashboard is really cool. It gives you all the information that you need and also allows you to create a journal for from the dashboard uh, for that point. So, yeah, I do see how many trades it took, what was, uh, which were, were the trades that uh, got me a drawdown and which were the trades that broke me back up so yeah i did take a look on it and and keep track of that i think it's important too i think because at least that way then you know if, if you're i will tell you where you're failing 
yeah exactly yeah, yeah. That, that that's one thing that we kind of look at in the risk reviews as well is like um where, where traders are going wrong and identifying or even even successful traders if they've kind of deviated from the plan or deviated from their structure identifying where they can get back onto things so it's quite interesting um so when you're taking trades you obviously talked about the fives and the tens uh 10 minutes and you're obviously lower time frame you're you're looking at the price action more consciously are you the type of trader that would take multiple positions um scaling in or are you kind of like the one and done take one position see how it see how it rides see how it plays out um, or, or do you prefer to like take two or three, maybe smaller positions and kind of float, float the P and L in that regard? Well, uh, I used to do buy my risk. I don't, if I'm using like, um, 10 pip stop loss, then I would place one entrance with 10 pip stop loss at half of my risk. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is still being half of that risk. Um, but with five pip stop loss, if I'm on drawdown, but it's the whole 1% or 1.5% uh, in the whole two trades. Uh, but with Alpha, that was an issue because you guys don't allow like coverage or martingale. And yep. you look at that as martingale. So it was either like doing the same, uh, entering a uh, one entrance with 10 pips stop loss and the one with five pips stop loss, I could enter that dividing. Uh, I mean, entering two more uh, uh, trades Yep. just to not overpassing the first initial trade. Mm -hmm. So, But at the end, I ended up just taking one trade uh, with Alpha. So I'm not doing any like overlapping trades or something like that. I'm okay. just taking a single trade every time. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, brilliant. So then you're putting uh, an idea on finding a more precise entry, being patient, having clear idea of, right, this is where I'm going to get in. I'm going to pull the trigger rather than trying to constantly float that's that's quite cool that's quite interesting <clears throat> excuse me um so i suppose that's really good um so i suppose then your your as you mentioned you, you're looking at euro aussie uh, or euro odd eurud and gold um so you're constantly looking at those so what times of the day as a day trader is there particular times of the day that you focus on is it session opens is a session closes is it maybe particular times because i know obviously costa rica is a few hours behind, behind obviously that of the uk um, is the particular times in the day that you tend to trade off of, or do you look kind of volume in, in that regard? Um, it's always New York, mostly. The open for New York, which is okay. around 8 or 8 a.m. Uh, Costa Rica time. So, yeah, I basically just start looking at the chart and everything and try to see the opening of the markets, but without any like major news on it, or just wait for the news to pass and the market to take shape again. So I can just look at the charts and see if there's anything that I can trade on. So, so you're predominantly from US open really to US close. That's probably when you take the bulk of your trades yep. then, I guess. Okay, cool. Really interesting. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. So I suppose then, I suppose going forward then, um, I think it's important to obviously have goals and objectives. So you talked about last, last January, last February getting funded and then getting funded obviously this this year as well and, and then kind of going from there and obviously making sure you're not repeating the same mistakes. Um, I suppose, have you any, because I know it's quite hard because some traders do, some traders don't. Have you any long-term kind of goals and objectives? Like, have you a plan for what you'd like to do or kind of where you'd like to be by the end of 2023 or 2024? Or are you kind of just taking it as it comes? Um, my goal for this year would be basically just taking the account and doing a scaling plan, uh, maybe getting another account with Alpha and just like join them together. Okay. And just trade that. Uh, I mean, I don't know, getting like, 400k funded but trade that at its, as if it was a 100k so i can yeah. take good risk management but at the same time i'm getting enough money for me to like uh be going step by step on my goals and um just get the freedom the trading can give you i mean instead of being eight to five from monday to friday you can just be on your pc one or two days a week yeah. and just get in the right set i mean it's not going to happen always but uh it's gonna it's gonna be worth it yeah Definitely, for sure, for sure, for sure. So then, obviously, I know you said there, obviously, flexibility in one, two days a week. What's, from from a trader who's obviously progressed and failed and come back in and passed again, what do you enjoy most about working as a trader? Uh, it's that, as you mentioned, it's that freedom that it gives you. Okay. Um, but it doesn't come from day to night. I mean, it is a matter of persistency and also psychology. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I've been here like... Uh, Two, two and a half or three years looking at this and uh 
losing money, <laughs> but it's not really like losing. I mean, when you lose the money, you are also learning and you're building up your psychology for when you become a uh, fund trader. But it's always hard, like being there and, and things not working out as, as you want them to be. And it's a matter of persistency. I mean, just stay there. You know, that's the path and just stay there. This is going to happen at some point. It's yeah. your process. Some Pretty people do it in uh, two months, some people in one year. Yeah. In my case, like two years. So just stay there. Every, everyone has their own path and their own journey, yeah. right? doesn't it? Like I know, I know guys that have done exceptionally well, become funded in three or six months, which is not not everyone. Um, like I know when I was starting out, it took me a long time because of self learning, trial and error, finding out what worked, what didn't work, risk, psychology, as you alluded to. I think that's really interesting as well. Like everyone's journey is is different. And everyone's process, the structure that they follow is obviously different as well. And I think when you, when people start comparing themselves to other people, oh, he's doing this in six months, why aren't I? I think it's quite difficult as well. And it can be disappointing as well for some people that they're maybe not getting there as quick as they'd like. Um, so I suppose with that, in, with that aside, if you were, were, were going back to yourself two, three years ago, what do you think are the qualities that makes a good trader? Or, or what do you think a, a, a trader, a new trader coming into the market should be focusing on, let's say today? If you um, it should fucking, uh, focus on learning first, then go and apply that and just realize that you're going to fail. I mean, it's going to happen. You're going to uh, lose some money. But if you have the right goals and if you're staying for the right reason, uh, that's going to be like, that's going to wait more mm -hmm. and it's going to make you stay there. And as I said before, it's just a matter of persistency. Just stay there. Uh, I mean, don't look at others because, I mean, they're on their path. Uh, learn from there because you can learn a lot from others, but uh, don't look at them. Don't expect your path to be like six months or one year as the others. It could be one year. It could be two. It could be three or four. But just stay there because, you know, that's the right path. Yeah. It's going to take as long as it's going to take, really, isn't it? That's the kind of yeah. approach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just learn yeah. to enjoy it. Yeah, I, and I think an awful lot of people don't enjoy it because they're so <clears> stressed, <throat> Um, particularly, obviously, if they're over risked or oversized and the disappointment then that comes with blown accounts. And I think it's all part of a journey. Uh, and that's something I just say to folks as well. And I think it's important to look at the bigger picture. Um, And when you have those, like when you look at the bigger picture rather than the short term picture, I think that's where the the kind of the improvement, the gradual improvement tends to come from. But um, yeah, no, yeah and it really depends on, on the person. I mean, in my personal case, uh, I do everything quiet. I mean, I don't tell others. Uh, if you look at my social media, they don't have anything like related to trading because mm -hmm. I basically do that quietly. Uh, I Because it helps my psychology. Like, I don't want to be like telling everyone like I'm doing trading and everything. Because it has like a bad reputation here in Costa Rica, the two other reasons. Okay. Um, but I'd rather just do it quietly, and it's not like I'm gonna be bragging about it once I get it. I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna post anything because I'm not like that. But okay. it's it's just what what's been helping me. So yeah, exactly. just yeah. find that in yourself and and try to uh, start from there. And and can I ask why is there in Costa Rica? Why is there a reputation thing? Is it what what where is that coming from? Uh, it's not. It's because they misunderstand what trading is. So basically, you need to start explaining to them what trading is. And it, when they hear the, the word Forex, uh, they think of network marketing because some companies uh, have entered the, uh, the country uh, just talking about Forex, but just like uh, focusing on network marketing. So okay. everyone everyone thinks that Forex is like network marketing. So it's okay. totally the opposite. Yeah, and of course. you need to start like explaining them what Forex is. And yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. worth it. Yeah, I, I suppose as well, the way the problem is with society now and social media, everyone's a guru or everyone's uh, know, knows, but unfortunately, a lot of them don't. Yeah, it does get like $1,000 an hour and everything like yeah. that. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 the, it's, it's the negative side to the industry, unfortunately. We kind of have it here as well in the UK. But uh, no, interesting. Well, obviously, Andreas, thank you very much um, for joining us today at the conversation. It's obviously lo love to get to know more better people um obviously our traders and seeing how they're progressing and so on so i think we'd love to be able to have you back again in, in six months time to see how you're progressing to see how your journey's developing for the year for sure um and obviously see how, how life's treating you obviously becoming funded and obviously hopefully touch wood make sure you you remain funded and, and obviously profitable through the course of the year so thank you very much for joining us um very best of luck obviously for 2023 
And of course, guys, if though for those of you who are ladies who are following along, make sure you tune in next time for the next trader interview as well. Thanks everyone. Thank you.